Hi, my name is Howard Kettover with Iron Gate Equine Clinic uh, based out of Madison, Wisconsin. Today I'd like to talk to you about a physical exam, a, a brief physical exam that can be accomplished with uh, no additional tools that can give you a lot of information. One of the reasons we, we recommend our clients know how to do a physical exam on their horses so they understand what the basics are uh, of their animal and the normals for their animal. So that way if they do run into a situation where they're not comfortable they can uh, look at that and say yes this is a very different heart rate or respiratory rate or something's changed in my animal that when they contact us as, as veterinarians we can have a more meaningful conversation with them. So understanding the basics and the normal for your personal animal has great value. Uh, so things we're going to talk about uh, is to start with is from afar. What can we see when we're just walking up to our horse? Uh, the horse's attitude. Uh, do they look bright and alert or are they dull? Is their head down? Do they look um, like they're lethargic? Uh, appearance. Uh, uh, how is their hair coat? Are they bleeding? Are they carrying a leg uh, or holding the leg up uh, that they don't want to put any weight on? Uh, are they keeping their head tilted in a certain way? Again, just doesn't necessarily mean something's wrong, but something's maybe a little, little out of the ordinary on them. Uh, and then posture would go into the same thing, thinking about how their leg, how they're holding their legs, or or what they're doing with their back. Next thing is we're approaching the animal. Are they eating? Uh, is this a normal time that the animal should be eating, or is this a normal time that we'd anticipate the horse say to be laying down? So what is the behavior of the horse? Is it routine for them to be in that area doing what they're doing, or is something out of the ordinary there as well? So now that we've looked at the horse from farther away, we're going to move in closer and start to put our hands on the horse. Uh, so the first thing we're, uh, we're going to talk about are things that you can do uh, as you're approaching before um, uh, we use any equipment at all, uh, but just putting our hands on them and looking at the head of the horse or the muzzle area. Uh, things we can check there very quickly uh, is the gum color. Is it nice and pink or is it a dark blue or a purple color or a brick red color? Uh, again, we don't necessarily need to know what that means, but we need to know what's normal for our horse, and, and then we can talk about that with our veterinarian. Uh, also, while we're looking at the color, we can look at the capillary refill time. If we go ahead and press our finger uh, on the mucous membranes just above the teeth, the color will blanch out of that, the blood will blanch out. How quickly does that color return or go back to the normal color that it was? And last thing we're going to notice in the mouth uh, is moisture content. Uh, is, are the gums dry and tacky or are they nice and, and, and moist? Uh, could be an indication of if we have a dehydration problem. Next, starting to move a little bit farther back on the horse uh, is skin tinting. Oftentimes you'll see people uh, do a skin tint and what we're looking for there is indications again of dehydration. If we're looking on that horse, oftentimes you'll see people pinch the neck, uh, the, the mid section of the neck. It doesn't very give us a very accurate uh, reading of, of hydration. We can get a false reading there pretty easily. So two places that we recommend taking a skin tint is just to pinch the skin right underneath the lower lid, right in this area or on the point of the shoulder. Uh, and just how quickly does that skin uh, go back? A normal skin tent is going to be uh, very elastic and go flat back very, very quickly. Some ones that dehydrate it may take a little bit delayed. Next thing we can look at is uh, a respiratory rate. As we're looking at the horse's um, flanks, counting for 15 seconds or 60 seconds, how often does that horse take a breath? Another place we can look at that is in the nostrils. We can watch the nostrils flare. Heart rate is another place that we can, can look uh, to try to get some information. Uh, obviously it's going to be quite a bit easier if we have a stethoscope and we'll talk about that in a minute. But some of the places we can take a heart rate on our horse is underneath the jaw. Uh, there is a uh, vein, or excuse me, an artery that runs right underneath the, the, the horse's jaw that we can uh, feel uh, palpate. It's about the thickness uh, typically of a pencil uh, and that's something that you can feel relatively easy. The other place that sometimes you can take a heart rate is down in the leg. Well, many of us are used to taking or feeling for digital pulses in the horse's legs if we're worried about a bruise or an abscess or some sort of inflammation in the, the, the hoof capsule. Well, we can feel down there along the horse's leg uh, to, to catch that heart rate as well without any tools. Next thing we can try to find is uh, bowel sounds. Again, it's going to be much easier if we have a stethoscope, but sometimes even just taking your ear and pressing it against the horse's abdomen back by its flanks. 
uh, we might be able to hear, uh, is there any motility at all? Is there any movement in that bowel? Does it sound uh, like a nice orderly uh, motion or does it sound very haphazard or, or irregular? Um, is something we can tell. Again, much easier with a stethoscope. And then the last thing would be a temperature. Obviously for this one we're going to need to use a, a, a thermometer for that. Um, Certainly the easiest thing to do this, these days is to go to uh, any of your local pharmacies and pick up a digital thermometer. It's not going to be 100% accurate, but it's going to be within a point, uh, excuse me, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of the actual temperature. So it's going to give us an idea. It's going to be close enough for what we need to know. Uh, but certainly having your horse used to having its temperature taken uh, during times when it's not stressful might make it a whole lot easier during times of stress when things are bad. So the next thing we want to talk about is a little bit more involved physical exam. So what we just did was very brief, very quick, can be accomplished in probably about 30 seconds to 45 seconds. You can get a very clear assessment of what your horse is doing and how they're uh, feeling and, and, and functioning at this time. So next is going to be a little bit more involved. The first piece of equipment that we always recommend involving uh, or, or purchasing and having is a stethoscope. The stethoscope gives us a lot of capabilities to listen much more clearly and get more uh, valid, valid information for our, our, our veterinarians and for ourselves. So stethoscopes are going to range in price anywhere from about $15 at most of your pharmacy stores up to $80 to $120. You can get a very nice stethoscope for probably about that $70, $80 range. Uh, and it's certainly something you don't want to put your name on because uh, once you put an investment in like that, you'd want to have it with you if, if, if possible. Uh, so with our stethoscope, what can we listen for? Obviously, the easiest thing is then going to be listening to heart rate. And the place where the easiest to take the heart rate on the horse is underneath the left elbow, uh, sort of up against the chest. Uh, and we can get count for 15 to, to 60 seconds, whatever you're comfortable with, and that gives us that beats per minute or the heart rate. We can also then also listen for any irregular beats or anything that's abnormal uh, because you now know what is normal for your horse. You might be able to recognize what is abnormal. Another place we're going to go ahead and use that stethoscope is listening to the lungs. Do we recognize that the horse's lungs are the same as they always sound, or is there something different? Do we hear something, a rattle or a wheeze or something that's not normal? Again, this is something you want to talk with your veterinarian extensively about, uh, but giving them information to help you better uh, is always nice. And then the last thing you can do with your stethoscope is listening to the bowel, so you get a much more clear uh, than just pressing your ear against the horse's bowel. This is going to help you out quite a bit just to, again, understand what's normal for your horse. Another thing that we can look at is jugular filling. Uh, this doesn't require any extra equipment, but it's just something we would go and press our fingers into the jugular furrow of the horse's neck, and how long does it take to fill? Does it fill in a second or two, or is it very delayed? Not a great bit of meaning to you at this moment in time, but going forward as you get more comfortable with your horse and talking with your veterinarian, it may be some very valuable information for them. And then the last thing in a little more complete physical exam we want to do is feel the muscle bellies or the muscle masses of the horse uh, over the top line of his back, coming around his quadriceps or back in his hindquarters, feeling the inside of the, the, the hind legs. Uh, Oftentimes we have a horse that that's, has a fatigue issue. That muscle may be very flaccid or soft or it could be very, very hard. And being able to tell your veterinarian what those muscles feel like and what's normal, especially if we've got a performance horse or an endurance type of horse, is really going to give you some, some tools to be able to manage your horse better and help your veterinarian quite a bit. So that's the basic physical exam. Some of it's very, very simple, no cost at all to do, but great information. Others are going to take a little bit of cost on your side to get, but worth knowing, worth having that basic information. Always try to learn what is normal for your horse, so in times of stress, you're going to understand what's abnormal. You don't have to know what it means, but just being able to convey that to your veterinarian on the phone is going to save uh, you quite a bit of time and also be able to help them out, have you help them to help you quite a bit better. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Howard Ketover with Iron Gate Equine. Have a great day.